Now, what Brother Harry has successfully done is to change my message. That's what he did. Um, so, uh, we are going to be following the direction of the tide. Turn your Bible with me quickly. Let's do something right now. Um, It changed, it changed the body. Changed the body. Um, in our work with God, we must uh, be flexible. Because when uh, you might have a perception that you are convinced is from the Lord and you come into an atmosphere and a certain current of the grace of God comes into that atmosphere, it might compromise the delicate balance upon which the emphasis you received is settled upon. And uh, if your confidence is in the Lord, you will migrate with him. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's do Isaiah chapter 6. Meanwhile, good morning. God bless you. You are welcome to the house of God. It's been uh, a wonderful time that we have, we, we have had since we began the conference. And we trust God that the, um, the procession will continue in this uh, mode of gallantry until we arrive at the terminus and um, the will of God is accomplished adequately in the name of Jesus. Once again, I salute that stream of ministry, Brother Henry. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims, and each one had six wings, and with twine he covered his face, and with twine he covered his feet, and with twine he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved, and the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. There were many, there were few master kings in the history of the nation of Israel within the window that is enshrined in the scriptures. And if you number the master kings, Uzziah was one of them. He was such a creative king, such a mighty personality. And he was a lover of inventions and that added to the capacity of the military might of the nation. Because he got some scientists that developed the engines. And with these engines, he could turn around the face of any form of battle. It was during his time that Israel became a world power. And a reference point in terms of politics and influence from the Middle East. And this personality is quite renowned on the pages of the scriptures. However, what verse number one is trying to say is that um, the, the two events that are captured in verse one are mutually exclusive events. They are not related the one 
to the other. It's, uh, Uzziah's death was quite a significant event that took place. And those days in my mother's time when uh, dates were not kept as, as um, faithfully as they are kept now, uh, many people reference their bet moments to epic making events that took place around um, the, the time of birth. So someone can say it was during the war I was born. You have an idea of the timing. And that's the kind of reportage that we have in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, his vision was received, it coincided with the time that Uzziah died. Uh, but in my own opinion, you are not wrong if you say that the death of Uzziah was responsible for his visibility. But um, in my own opinion, it was just a reference point to mark the moment so that it can be rec reckoned as an item that is consistent with a certain time. In the day that King Uzziah died, I saw the law. If you study your Bible, you are going to find um, few outright revelations of God disclosed in Scripture. And when you see these revelations of God, it, 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 it's needful for you to capture what side of God was actually on display because the person of God happens to be an eternal personality that it's impossible for you to capture his total essence within the little framework called time. Even eternity is not sufficient uh, a frame of reference for us to capture everything that has to do with God. Eternity won't help us. It won't, it won't, it won't just confer all knowledge to you. It, all of eternity is not sufficient for us to fully know God. The day you fully know God is no longer God. Just like you know physics. It's no longer a mystery to you. But God will forever be a mystery. Even the angels that have been there around his throne, they are, he comes up with a new reflection of his possibility and worship continues because there's no end to his manifestation. So it's needful for you to capture the very scent, the very texture, the very color of the manifestations of God that is held up in the scripture that you stumble upon. If you go to the um, book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 1, for instance, the disclosure that you will find is the revelation of God's glory. And that's quite a complex and grafted truth. When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 4, you are going to see the revelation of God's person. And that, that's the closest outlook that was ever had of the father in his sanctuary as he sits upon the throne. But in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, what we find is a revelation of God's holiness. Now, I, I will need to work some things out here because uh, Brother Henry has set um, something in motion and I'm trying to make text and words out of the flame that engulfed my spirit while he was ministering. I'm trying to interpret what I'm, I believe came upon my heart during the, uh, the time of the window of his ministry. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6, we have a revelation of God's holiness. And in the environment of this holiness, there are several specialized angels uh, that minister therein. Uh, it, it's therefore easy for you to understand that when we are talking about God's holiness, uh, the angelic type that you are going to see is the seraphim. And when we are talking about the glory of God, the angelic type that you are going to see is the cherubim. And it is needful for us to see the design of the seraphim because the duty of the seraphim is to protect the holiness of God. It's quite an integral, functional part of our God uh, that it must be protected. And that's why it's 
it's, it's quite strange in our generation where, uh, that the issues of holiness are not, uh, is no longer doctrine. It's, we're in the fast lane. We're trying to make more pounds, more cars, more degrees. And the expense of the intrinsic factors that constitute our true reality. And it happens to be that these, these, these angelic beings um, have six wings. And in the, in the environment of God's holiness, two of these wings are used to cover their faces. I'm wondering. And two of these wings are used to cover their feet. And it is, it, it, it's with only two wings that they fly. Mm. Well, 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 for the purpose of our lecture this morning, we might not need to, to highlight why the face needs to be covered. In the midst of God's holiness, these creatures had to conceal their identity. They had to sh shut out their feet. You will, well, let's leave that, let's leave that. And with two wings that did fly. It was a strange sight to this prophet. And it happens to be that the train of these angelic personalities filled the entire temple. He's never seen that kind of stuff before. And he's wondering what exactly is happening. But the impact of the environment that he found himself uh, did something to him. Meanwhile, it was not so difficult to rehearse what the angelic personalities were saying. They were saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, and the whole earth is full of his glory. I was, I was thinking that if the Lord is holy and the angels are acknowledging the fact that he is holy, then the whole earth should be full of his holiness. But, the Bible says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The old head is full of your glory. That is to say that the stuff of glory is holiness. If you are going to walk in glory, <laughs> the back end of glory is holiness. Our God happens to be a God of glory. And the reason why he's a God of glory was just revealed in this encounter that Isaiah had. He's a God of glory because he's a God of holiness. And the stage was being set for his glory to be revealed and Isaiah was brought into the back end of the reality and he saw God's blazing holiness. An encounter with God's blazing holiness now probed something on him. You notice that there's no evangelist here that is crying out, repent for the kingdom of heaven. Is at hand. The moment he came into the environment and he looked upon the glory of God, the holiness of God, he didn't need a preacher. His state was revealed in the light of the purity and the fragrance of that reality. And then he himself confessed his, his, his current state he didn't need an evangelist to help him out. He said, um, let's, let's take an inventory of his testimony about himself in the environment of the glory of God. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Can we do verse 5? Then said I, woe is me. Why? I am undone. How? Because I'm a man of unclean lips. Did, did any of the cherubims discuss with him? Was there any whisper? He, he himself began to report himself. I am a man of unclean lips. Meanwhile, the, the procession was going on. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Then one man by the side said, I am a man of unclean lips. The environment probed. His life, and this was what the probe revealed. I'm a man of unclean lips. 
Why was he a man of unclean lips? Because he dwelt among the people of unclean lips. I want to talk about the breakthrough believer. Couldn't find any other word to yeah, to breakthrough believer. Now you see, the breakthrough believer that is the believer that has the capacity to live differently from his environment. Obviously, from this presentation, you can see that Isaiah was not a breakthrough believer because he took on the configuration of his city. He was under the influence of the spirit of his city, of the trend of his city. It means that Isaiah at this time had not yet realized the reality of Christ. And so he was operating according to circumstances and situations. He was measured. He was a creature that was exactly the way the trend in his city allowed. So heritage is die when people are like Isaiah. Spiritual things fade away when people are like Isaiah. Some of you, when you were back in Uganda, when you were back in, in Namibia, when you were back in Nigeria, before you came here, you were hot for God until you began to stay in Nottingham. And then you felt it was civilized for you to be measured in your devotion to the things of God. It is that kind of civilization that, that blots out the investments that God has in the territory and concedes the land to Satan. So we are talking about the breakthrough believer. I just wanted to use this scripture to show you uh, that Isaiah was not a breakthrough believer. He's, he's a, he, was cons he was a creature that was modeled after the corruption of his context. Are you still there? All right, let's move on briefly. We'll go to the book of Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. 2 18. And unto the angel of the church in Titeria write These things saith the Son of God, please. Okay, I think I need to give you a little background before we begin to go into all these readings. Little background. If you uh, you've studied the Bible through and through before, you'll find in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul begins to prophesy. And his prophecy was about the last days. He says, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That means there was going to be an erosion. The things of God were going to be eroded from the earth. And the strategy that the kingdom of darkness was going to deploy was the manifestation of seducing spirits and also doctrines of devils. I don't have time would have digressed so that I will show you three basic doctrines. Three basic doctrines of devils. The other ones are offshoot of those basic three. He said those, those things will come into view and the reason, the result is going to be that some are going to depart from the faith. And he also died the death of a martyr. And the only apostle of the lamb that was left was John the Beloved. So the things that Paul prophesied about were beginning to happen in the days where John was very, very elderly because Jesus kept him as the last witness to bring direction to the church under persecution. 
If you see the introduction he gave us about himself in the book of Revelation chapter 1, you'll be convinced about the, 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 the nature of the error. Everything fought against Jesus. Everything fought against Christ. And you could not say you were a Christian in that time without being a particular persecution. And that's why he introduced himself to us in the book of Revelation chapter 1 as our companion in tribulation. That is what authenticated his letter. Now, with all of that in place, this man had a special kind of gift. Because if you check the three major functionaries that formed, whose ministries formed um, um, the, the bulk of, 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 of New Testament riches, namely Peter, Paul, and John. If you follow them critically, you find that the grace they had was consistent with what Jesus met them doing the first time they encountered him. For Peter, he was casting net. And Jesus made him a caster. He was the one that casted the net on the day of Pentecost and brought in so many Jews. He was the one that casted the net in the book of uh, Acts chapter 11 and casted the net into the Gentile community. He was a caster. So even though he had the calling of an apostle, the functional, the most strong grace that he had was evangelical in nature. Then for Paul, you will notice that the business that he was involved with before he got into ministry was the business of tent making. And when he got into ministry, God now began to use him as a builder. If you go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, you will hear him say stuff like study to show yourself approved, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you have ever seen someone, a fashion designer that makes clothes, the, the, the um, skill in fashion designing is in the ability to cut. But if you go cut now, if you go cut now, one of the, 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 the legs will be a baggy and the other one will be pencil. And that, that, that rightly dividing that he added there was from tent making business, the cutting aspect. So he was a dexter of doctrine because he knew building and God made him a builder. What you are today is what you wear from kindergarten. Uh, the, the educational people just helped you become yourself, more of yourself. That's what I'm saying. And for John, are you still with me? For John, Jesus met him and his brother. They were mending their nets. It means they have had a, a great catch. And so the net was broken and they were mending the net. So uh, John's ultimate ministry was to mend the church. And that was what he was trying to do in the book of Revelation. He had prophetic insight to see how much damage the devil had done so that he can come and mend it through the stitches called Christ. So if we progress with the reading, there's a fire burning in my spirit. I'm just trying to give voice to the fire. But when we get there, you will understand the errand of the fire. And unto the angel of the church in Titeria, right? So John comes, he looks at a set, the church in a certain city in Glasgow because of his prophetic gift. You see, um, the strongest scepter that Peter had was evangelical. The strongest scepter that Paul had was teaching. Strongest scepter that John had was prophetic. So this is the prophetic apostle that was kept for the end time. The orders died and part of the reason why he had to, he had an overdose of that prophetic grace 
was so that he could design the state of the churches to administer his mending work. So he comes to Titeria. This was the presentation. And he looks at the church and then he, he takes from Christ the revelation of Christ. Oh, you're not with me. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, John had to meet with Jesus. You know, if you've ever worked in the bank, you only work with, with real documents, real um, currency, so that when you stumble on a fake one, you'll be able to identify. And so John has to meet the original. You will think that, yes, according to the Gospels, John was Jesus' best friend. So you will think that because John was close to Jesus, that he was an acquaintance with Jesus, that John knew Jesus. His spot in, in their conclave was, was, was a constant. He had to be by the side so that he can put his, his head on Jesus'. That was where he was. But the fact that he put his head on Jesus' breast didn't really mean that he knew his heartbeat until the book of Revelation chapter 1 and, and when John was on the Isle of Patmos. Meanwhile, he became a menace to, to the Romans so they estranged him from civilization and put him on an island without supplies so that he would die of hunger. And while he was in that place, they didn't know the name of that thing was called dry fasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it came to pass that he, he received a summon. And when he received that summon and he... For once, he decided to turn away from the pain of his, the consciousness of his affliction. And when he was stunned, he saw Jesus. But you see, when he saw Jesus, he didn't know it was Jesus. Because you see, I saw one that looked like the Son of Man. Because the revelation that John had about Jesus was a time-based revelation, Jesus of Nazareth. And that won't suffice now. And so Jesus came in his full immortal regalia as a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And when John looked upon him, Jesus had to introduce himself to him. He said, I am Alpha Omega. In the Greek, there's no and. I'm Alpha Omega. I'm Alpha Omega. So you see, John needed an introduction to understand that the state of his immortality doesn't recognize time. I was there in the beginning. I am there at the end now. John fell down. He said, no, this is not a crusade for you to be slain. He laid hands on him, revived him again, and said, I am first, last. Not and, I am first, last. It was when John was able to stumble fully into the revelation that God was offering him as Alpha Omega that John received the grace for prophetic writing. Previously, he wrote apostolic writings. So he was now going to write prophetically. It was on the operating system of that revelation, Alpha Omega. So that's the background. Are you there? Some other things are still there, but we need mileage. We need to, the Lord will help us. Can you restore my scripture? Is this Alpha Omega? This is it. All right. I go back to my Bible. Now, so John comes to Titeria because he is a prophet. He comes into the territory. The moment he steps into the territory, then Jesus begins to tell him about the church in that territory. So that's, then he, he begins to prophesy it and then he recommends to the church in that territory what they need to do to get restored. So that's the idea, okay? So can we do, I was supposed to do um, three churches, but we'll do one. You do the rest. Um, where did we stop? Revelation chapter 2, verse what? 1, 8. All right. And unto the angel of the church in Titeria, right? This thing saith the Son of God. Now, listen to me. It was only John that saw the full disclosure of Jesus. Are you here? 
Now, when he comes and he looks at a church, when he sees their ailment, he will prescribe a certain aspect of the Christ to that church that was consistent with their ailment. Because, are you here? Because in, in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3, Jesus is seen as a healing balm. So he's prescribing the aspect of Jesus that will bring about healing to that church. So he's fulfilling the ministry of a mender. Okay? All right. So he, he, he says, so take note of what he's telling the church in Titeria. This thing said, the Son of God, one, who had his eyes like a flame of fire, two, and his feet like fine brass. What's the meaning of that? Son of God, he has eyes like what? Flame of fire, and he has feet like what? This was the only revelation he disclosed about Jesus to the church. Okay? I know thy works, and thy charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last, to be more than the first, notwithstanding. I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he. It's a revelation again of himself. That such at the reins. Oh my God, I don't have time for that. And hearts. And I will give unto every one according to his works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Titeria, as many as have not this doctrine, and have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other body, but that which ye have already. Hold fast till I come. Then he now makes, verse 26 is where I'm going. But before we get to 26, I will do an analysis. He said, he that overcome it. That means the way. Are you still with me? Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. He says, he that overcome it, that means in the midst of the corruption of the spirit of Jezebel that was operating in the territory, there were some people that the spirit of Jezebel could not conquer. These ones, are, they are overcomers. Those are the breakthrough believers. In spite of what is in the territory, these ones had a signature that the attempts of the devil in the territory could not quench. He said, he that overcome it and keep it, my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. So you will see that when he speaks to each church, hallelujah, when he speaks to each church, he now, in the book of Revelation, he, he is not looking for the members of the churches. God moves from congregation and his emphasis becomes personal. He. That means when he wants to change the United Kingdom, for instance, he will not be looking for a, a, a congregation, a big ministry. What he will, he wants to start with he that overcome it. The one that is not a victim of the trend, of the tide, of the pattern that have been meticulously factored into the territory on the account of the territorial forces that operate in that place. It means those ones are operating through Christ Jesus. So they are not of that system. They are surviving by another lifeline. And that's why they are not making obeisance to the images 
of jealousy that have been raised in the territory. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. We need to say a few things here. Meanwhile, you know, the three identities of the Christ that he unveiled in the midst of all the metaphors that were that accompanied the revelation of Jesus he had in the book of Revelation chapter 1. You will notice that Jesus was identified as the Son of God. Do we have time for that this morning? As the Son of God. Okay, can we um, digress? Maybe we'll digress a little. Just a little. Uh, so let's digress to the um, book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. And please don't forget the great confession of Peter. Thou art the Christ. Thou art the son of the living God. His office, his ministry, and then his person. Those were the two aspects of the great confession of Peter. Now, we want to, we want to see an aspect of that great confession, which is the aspect that has to do with the son of God. Is that clear? Yes, All right, so we'll, we'll look upon um, Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. So the subject of Hebrews chapter 1 is the Son. Um, the apostle is trying to acquaint us with the Son of God because the presentation that was made to the church in Titeria about the Christ was that first he was the Son of God. They needed that revelation. Are you with me? Second, he had what? Eyes of fire. And third, feet like brass. Okay. All right, let's start with Son of God. I'll just, that means we're, when I'm done with this criteria, I will not do any other one because I need to show you the characteristics of breakthrough believers so that you will know if you are one of them. You will know if God is actually looking to you for any significant thing in the days to come because it's not, it's not so good for you to not to know your state. There are a lot of scriptures we can bring out, like the entire Christian journey covers 42 stations. Those were the 42 times the children of Israel stopped from their pilgrimage from Egypt to Canaan. That's the full graph of the Christian journey. And that's why when you go to the book of Matthew and you see the genealogies, you will see it is 42, consistent with the stations. The Bible is so prophetic that it will take a spirit to make someone not to see what God is showing. It will take a strange spirit. It's so clear, so prophetic. There's no way you can do business with the scriptures and not know that the God that put those, the scriptures together is the one that created this universe. There's no way. It's too, prof too accurate. So God affords us through his word opportunities to know where you are so that you will not say, hey, we did not know. It's there. Check. It's not everything in the Bible that is a message. Some, some things are maps so that you can trace your location. That I just took, I'm in the fourth station. That's why there's drought. That's why I'm only seeing the sons of Anak. <laughs> the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, he says, he has in this last day spoken unto us by his son. So, let us find out the definition of his son. It is by this is son that he made the world. This is son has been appointed heir over all things. The meaning of that is that he is the administrator of the purposes of God. Yes, go on. He's the brightness of God's glory and the express image of God's person. The meaning of that is that he's the definition of God. 
If you want to know what God would have done under these circumstances, just go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and check what Jesus did. That's what God would have done if he were man. The clearest revelation of God is Jesus Christ. Brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. That is the clearest definition of God. And upholding all things by the word of his power. He's the one that set this secretary in motion by the authority that is upon his lips. Are you still with me? Now, um, this, are, this is who the son is. And um, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says that we, we need to look unto Jesus. But if you read it from the Greek, it's not look unto Jesus. It's look away unto Jesus. It means you need to, you need to look away from something in order for you to look unto. Uh, uh, hallelujah. What I think has happened to the church in, the, in Titeria is that they, they were not looking unto Jesus. They were looking unto the things they should look away from. And because of that, it was easy for them to slip into a state of measured possibility. And they did not even know that they had departed so far from alignment because they were not looking at the reference. And so in the book of Revelation, he now makes a presentation, a passionate appeal about the Son of God, the reference, so that we can check our lives against his own patterns. Okay? The second insight that came about him was his fiery eyes. And the context of that revelation is actually judgment. Because you have binocular vision. You can see as much as you are blind now because your eyes are in front. You can only see 180 degrees to the side and to your front. And you are also blind 180 degrees from the side to the back. Binocular vision. And the Bible says that Jesus has two eyes of fire. So when Jesus, you know how judgment will take place? They'll bring our works and put it here and Jesus will look at it and as, if it's not in his perspective, it will burn. So anything that exists that is not within the range of his perspective cannot make eternity. That's the instrument of judgment. Okay, let me not trouble you. Well, that's that. My emphasis for reading this scripture is he that overcome it. It means that the grace of God upon your life is strong enough to, to, for you to still be a witness in spite of the darkness that is in your territory. If you are a victim of your territory, it means that you are not looking to Jesus for grace, for supplies, for equipment. You have found another source for support. You are no longer such a Christian that seeks to lean on the Lord. Meanwhile, the idea that God had in mind for the Christian life is that the Christian cannot be complete apart from his spirit. And that means you were created a, a creature that can only operate by grace. Do you understand that? Because in grace, God is the one that is at work. In the law, you are the one that is at work. So God set up a system, and everything he's asking you to do, the intent he has in mind is that you will draw the capacity to do everything he asks you to do from him. And that means you cannot be an accurate Christian apart from deliberately, you, you, are, you are indebted to him because you spend from his reality. And the moment you find another way to operate that is not exactly leaning on him, uh, it means you stop looking unto him. And so the church had to be reintroduced to the Son of God as the epicenter, as the circumference, as, as the extent and the limits of divine possibility. First question to you, what are you looking on? What are you looking on? A season came in the body of Christ when a major wave of pollution began to, began to hit our emphasis. 
And everything became about what we could get, what we could buy, kind of things that we could acquire, about breakthrough and all of that. That's not the emphasis of the apostolic faith. Your work with God is going to influence every aspect of your life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, you see, when God, there's a grace God will put on you. I'm, 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 I'm a, a normal village boy, all right, from Africa. But in the woods, I found the Holy Ghost. And I decided that I would never leave him. And the first mistake I make, made was prayer. And I have not recovered from it. I learned how to pray for long. <laughs> I learned how to fast for days, 200 days, 140 days. And then I started enjoying it. And because I feel ventilation, I feel so fulfilled and all of that. I didn't have a name for my experiences until I started seeing angels. <laughs> One day Jesus walked into my room. I said, Is that how you come? Hey. I didn't know that he was sucking me into his realm. Yes. And when I was filled with him, he began to send me to people. Oh. It's Tamara. Good for nothing. It was Jesus I looked on to that I became who I am today. And meanwhile, the last time I checked, he told me, you are just starting, you are just starting. You have not. You are trying, but you have not started. I believe his evaluation much more than the healing I get on the continent of Africa. I went somewhere. Women came and laid down and said, as I come from my vehicle, I should step on them. So when I came, I, it was in the grass. I, I told them I was going to fly on the grass too. That was how I, I, I got them to stand. Oh, they will. But if you follow that and you don't follow his own scale of measurement, you will be in limbo. Looking unto Jesus. It is him. This part you are working, he altered it and he has completed it in himself. So that emphasis started coming into the body of Christ. And, and it, it was like now the in thing, this is the new style. And we went that route at the detriment of several factors. The Christian faith is the only faith that you need the founder all the way in the process. There is no point that you get so educated that you now do it yourself. In fact, your education is supposed to endear you more to him so that you can tap into the resources that his grace makes available. And if, if you have ever enjoyed that grace ever in your life before, you are indebted to him forever. That's what you don't know. Jesus had to be reintroduced to the company because he was no longer the factor. People found a way to survive, to do ministry without Jesus. How many of you have been to Nigeria before? There used to be one guy that was called a senior prophet. One guy. There was one guy somewhere who was called a senior prophet. They asked him, when did you give your life to Christ? I was born again from my mother's womb. He, 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 he could have lied. You are not with me. You are not here. You are not here. That man could have lied and said the normal things he knows we say. And touching the new birth experience. But he refused to acknowledge that he ever gave his life to Christ because he was not born again. And his ministry had all the results that most of the pastors in this room want to get. He had the crowd, had the dollars, had the money, had the influence, had the accolades from men, and he did all of that without Jesus. Everything that most of us today celebrate as breakthrough, he had it. And he never confessed Jesus. He has raised a new priesthood in the body. Of, that's that damage. He raised a new priesthood in the body of Christ in that land. A priesthood that don't need Jesus to do anything. Don't need Jesus. And then you will now find so-called preachers of the gospel calling that guy a man of God. 
celebrating him as an icon. Meanwhile, a legacy has been left behind. The many ways by which we can do the things we want to do without Jesus. He said, he that overcome it. I will give him a name and I will write it upon a white stone. Do these are immortal things. This, this is not a Bentley. These are immortal things that are immovable for all eternity. The pillars of our belief system has experienced a terrible assault. And we, at this time, we need to say again to the brethren, looking unto Jesus. Because we've looked away from him for long. For long. When I look at the church in South Africa, I weep. I see a lot of packaging without Jesus. And anything that is raining in South Africa is going to affect Botswana, Namibia, um, um, Malawi, Swaziland. So South Africa happens to be a gateway territory. And the deception is so deep. I, I, oh my, you need a satellite, huh? a cable satellite, to watch what they preach in Kenya as the gospel. then you will know that we have found a way of surviving without Jesus. Oh, we cry. How come the heritages have gone? Ah, we left the plumb line so long a time. And so the prophet comes again to do his ministry as a mender. He's reintroducing some things that you would call very basic. It is on those basic points that we departed. And then at the end of the day, the emphasis of the spirit was no longer the congregation. Was the breakthrough believer. He that what? That overcome. If we are going to do anything that is significant to the United Kingdom, it's going to come to that personal level. Have you made up your mind? I will overcome. We were driving home, just driving home from the meeting yesterday and all of that. And I saw the sons of the land. Most of the ladies were half naked. They said they are going for, I don't know what they were going for. But anything it was, that thing was very strong. Yeah, it was very strong. Because the, the direction was the same from, from all the quarters. Anything that thing was, that thing is stronger than Jesus in this land. So Jesus is no longer looking for the big church. You have cars parked outside. You have a piano and a tambourine. That's not what he's looking for. He's, he's saying, he that overcome. So in, in, in the metrics of end time apostolic ministry, God is seeking out the breakthrough believer. That's the crux of the matter. Hallelujah. I live for one thing only. I live for one thing only. For one thing only. When I go to, I, 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 I just left Ghana to come here. And then we hold conferences. They are free. You don't pay to, come, to partake of it. And if there are extra costs, this preacher that came to facilitate the meeting, I will spend myself first before I have the authority to ask, well, we are caught up in a situation here. Um, if you are obliged, if you are willing to, be part, to participate, when I can only say that when at least a thousand US dollars from. And then, and then some of the elders in Ghana now said, preachers here don't do this. They were provoked. You know what? Even if nobody gives, I will still clear that debt. I will not live forever. I will not live forever. Yes, I know that. I, 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 I always remind my wife, I say, 
Okay, let me not go into the... I will not be here for you. But I want to sow a seed into, into the eternal realm. Thieves cannot break into that realm to make away with that investment that has gone into that place. Time is a window. A possible window of investment. I do it for Jesus. Oh, the other day, we got a feedback that one of the cameras got broken and this is, we need to pay. Oh, all the seed you've been blessing me with, for which I thank you in the name of, I, I called the pastor and said, we have, uh, we have money here. He rejected it and said, no, 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 this is not. Guess what? Before I leave here, I will still find out if there is. You know, because the game, this game is looking we are doing it for Jesus. That's what the game is about. That's what the game If Africa will come out of the ruins from, from the swamp, some self, some a, a new breed without greed, a radical opposition against unrighteousness will need to arise. We do not seek our own glory. We do not seek to become popular. But let the fame of his anointing, let the fame of his anointing fill the earth. For the Bible says that when he came out of the wilderness after the 40 days of fasting, that the fame of him went abroad. Let the fame of his glory go abroad the whole earth in the name of Jesus. That's why we need to ask ourselves, why, why we are in ministry? Because you may not know that you are already doing the kind of ministry that is hindering what God wants to do in the territory. You are already like the territory, assisting Satan to establish infrastructure in the landscape. I am a man of unclean lips. Meanwhile, he had prophesied for chapter 1, for chapter 2, for chapter 3, for chapter 4, and chapter 5. He, and all his prophecies are, Woe unto you, O Lord! In chapter 1, it was when he got to chapter 6 and saw holiness. He said, hey, the real woe is woe is me. <laughs> woe is me. For I am a man of unclean the, the, He didn't need to be reminded of his, his state. In that state, he was prophesying against kings, against nations. That you will fall. You will be forgotten. You know, ministry can be theatrics and Jesus is not there and you are, you are busy you know how to hey give me volume there. I'm still learning it you know how to dance on the stage and everybody is just excited glory and when they leave the place and Satan say welcome back welcome back. they have no authority begins with the hope of reclaiming territories considered to the enemy is in the hands of the overcomers, the breakthrough believers. And when he looks and searches the nations, he's not trying to find out how good a preacher you are. He's seeking overcomers, men that survived the time. So in my city, if you are a preacher, one of the most lucrative things to do is to go to government house. I said, we have a prophecy for the king. And even if you lie, you'll go back with some money. Then next week you say, and the Lord came. So we now said, We don't know the way to the king's house. We will remain on the altar. They said, no, you are a Jew. And you have accepted to embrace poverty. What? <laughs> you know? The overcomers have their own drive. Mm. They have their own body. They have something that puts their gaze on, are fixed on Jesus. 
And when you want to do that kind of ministry now, the modern guys will say, you are, you are, you are old school. They are no longer trendy. In your Facebook page, there are no likes anymore. You need likes. You need uh, views. And you are trying to do everything you, you can do, including lying, so that you will get likes. You have stopped looking. You have stopped looking. And if you had the kind of privilege that Isaiah had in that atmosphere of holiness, maybe the documentary of yourself that will be unveiled will be more than on clean lips. It might be strange. And that's why we need to set our gaze on Jesus. He said, looking unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. You are not called to be creative. The part has already been ordained. And we see, we see these days, I don't know about the UK, but, but in Africa, because I've been around in Africa for some time, you will see stage, you see showbiz. People fake miracles in the name of Jesus. And all kinds of stuff just going on in the name of ministry. Oh, once, once the pounds are coming in, once the dollars are rolling in, once, once the finances are good and we can still float in the land in, in, in spite of the recession, it means God is good. The Ebenezer, hitherto, has the Lord helped us. He said, he that, that overcometh, he that overcometh. He that overcometh. I don't know who will make up his mind in this conference this morning and say, my God, in the heart of Liverpool, I will never kiss bow and never bow down to his image. I, in the heart of Nottingham, oh, Every single day, I'll bow my knees unto the Father and bring supplication about the territory, about the land. I will make proclamation and proclaim salvation on the land and I will be standing at the end. Oh! Come Sovresketo mokoria silamonde Samokoria sikabalama Briskofelamina skonteli Ekulemendo skebolo koriatila Isko sesela brokotomina kadia Embolon sheli ambakanteli Briskofele kabakondeli akontamula atama Esi komeni ate Rumana sukelando skobre Iapakula masika bondali Ieklosketa meskuminala Ambelo kosi mandaye And out of the ashes of London A bright light will emerge He said the people of Zabulom And the people of Naphtali The people that sit in darkness And under the shadow of death Unto them has a light shine Oh, Sakibonde Breboski somanda yeto kobelama Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Who will be our man at the gate? Who will stand against the beast of the land? Who will herald my glory in the cities of the Midlands? Simon Kelly in a Toreco scheme. Palamo Moria Kesi, Bresco Fonda, Ikabele Kaite, Iame Sunda, Iakame Kote Malite, Siba Moria Mesco Demanda, who 
shall I send? I've been looking for someone from your family. I traveled for 25 generations to lay my hands upon you. Who shall I send? Even though I've apprehended you, I am still looking out. I'm still looking out. I'm still looking out. I'm still looking out. Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Who will carry the banner? Who will carry the flame? Who shall I send? Labros queso si la macatalo. Shambera cusa y con beleza. I seek a man in the land. I seek a woman in the land. I appear to you in your dreams. I appear to you in visions. My words came to you by prophecy. I've been hunting you for a long time. Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Send the Kobokotolia. Send the Lord. I'm a cause. I made your way for you to come to the United Kingdom as a witness unto me. But when you began to see the pound sterling, you departed from the covenant. And so I'm still seeking. Who shall I send? 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 And who will go? Who will go for us? Many went for themselves. Now we seek men that will go for us. Who will go for us? Who will go for us? Oh. Who will go? Who will go? So that London can be reclaimed. So that Edinburgh can be reclaimed. So that Glasgow can be reclaimed. Nottingham will be reclaimed. Oxford will be reclaimed. Aberdeen will be reclaimed. Who shall I send? Who shall I send? Who shall I send? This is that moment of destiny. The heavens look to the earth for a response. Who will go for us? Who will go for us? Sia Combelia, Scabo Cosa Salamonde, Icoscedo, Laberia Compalabola. Who will go for us? Who will go for us? Conseig, Prescofila Bocoma. That's why we came. So that we can receive grace of the Lord. Whoa. Sigo Vaikena. You are that messenger he's been waiting for for a very, very long time. By your hand, he will subdue nations. By your hand, kingdoms will bow. By your hand, the lame will walk again. So may he stumble amo. Yes, good day, Melekeria. He will put his grace upon your life. 
He will put his grace. He will put his grace. I can him on day. He's been hunting you for a long time. Give you the job. Give you the opportunity. But you turned away from him. Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? Samo Kelly Matalia. Yebo Sika Mandeli. Yeto Koseka Lantoria. Semina Telia Kosketa Bondo. Glory to God. Glory. Glory. He wants to send you. 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 For there was a man sent by from God whose name was John. He will send you. 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 Skito men so say like. Yes, so say the Catali Amahala. He come no use a cabai. Prosketa makelamo seli. Sigo be skento bina. Yedo prosketa mai ta kobelam. Hey, he so say. Rasketo konde, isa minale kori amama. He appeared to you in your dreams. He showed you the fire that is to come. I came to announce to you that this is the time. Say kosela mandoria. Senali Bokoria Rabo se kadami se sosi Bresko fela munde kabato mi sa sala kore Onde kabas ke sumina Elabro kosketa balature a maski sosi Enduria ke moskoto murosi se sali Escote mai cura, mante curia, schilobonte, fresco, cone, ischè, 
Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Matthew, Jesus speaking about the ministry of John the Baptist. Said, He that has ears, let him hear that John was Elijah that was to come. But in the book of Revelation, God is not looking for those that have ears in the plural, but he that has an ear. We need to pray this morning for an ear. An ear. Only such that have an ear of the Holy Ghost can hear what the Spirit is saying, not to individuals, to the church. You may have an ear to hear what God is telling you, but you may not have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Can we ask God this morning for an ear? An ear. For he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give of the hidden manna. And will give him a white stone. And in that stone a new name written. Which no man knoweth saving him that receiveth. He that hath an ear. He that hath an ear. Many of you in this place, God has been showing you things. Things that you did not take seriously. But he that had an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit of God is saying to the church. To him that overcome it. I will give power to rule over nations. And he shall rule over them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of the potter that shall be broken to shivers even as I received of my father and I will give unto him the morning star he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches We ask for a blessing this morning. Give us an ear to hear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Once again on this ground of Glasgow, Scotland. We bring the offering of our dedication and our submission to you. And we ask that you help us. The harvest indeed is plenteous, but the laborers are few. We pray thee, O Lord of the harvest. Send me. Send me. Can you ask him to send you?
send me. Send me. Send me. Send me. Send me. Send me. Thank you, Lord. Send me. Send me. Send me. 